what an entrance that was. Hello everyone, my name is Jamie and I'm one of the Vitality Coaches and also lucky enough to be your host for today's session. So firstly, welcome. Um, I hope you're all staying safe and doing well. So we'll get straight into the action. My first duty of the day is to congratulate and welcome our newest member of the Vitality Performance Champions team. So Alex Danson, before we introduce you and bring you out, I'm just gonna give everyone a few headline statistics. So Alex has a pretty impressive CV. Um, she's had made over 300 career appearances for England and GB hockey. She also owns an Olympic bronze medal from London 2012, but as well as that, also a big one, the gold medal from Rio 2016. So the list does go on, but um, no one really likes a show off today. So um, firstly, Alex, congratulations uh, for the announcement today. Welcome. Hopefully we can bring you up on screen now. How are you doing? Thanks very much, Jamie. Hi, welcome everybody. Um, thank you very much for having me here today. I'm absolutely delighted to be joining the team um, and also the partnership with um, England Great Britain Hockey today has been absolutely fabulous. So yeah, lovely to be here. Thanks, Jamie. For sure. Thank you. Well, thanks for being here. Um, I think it's going to be a good session. And like you just mentioned, the announcement and introduction of Alex today is in alignment with the partnership that Vitality have with England and GB Women's Hockey. So just to get your thoughts on that, Alex, because it seems like a pretty positive and big step forward today. Oh, it's absolutely incredible. I mean, it's it's a game changer for the for the England Great Britain women's team. You know, we're six months out from the Tokyo Games um, to be partnered with Vitality, who already you know they you know they're, they're they're leading in all of the the women's sports so we're just so happy from a hockey perspective to to join the caliber of athletes that are already there so it, it's great news and it, and what a year for for vitality to show their support nice the timing seems good doesn't it? i think there's some big mm -hmm. things to come i think what we're really looking forward to is seeing the progression that we can make with both women in sport and obviously you know promotion of the grassroots level of hockey too so two things that are so important and they deserve to be spotlighted and highlighted so fingers crossed for everything that we can do together um, but as if alex alone wasn't enough in that big news we also have one of the original performance champions so james hudson he is one of the originals he's now a retired professional rugby player but he's also now working as a performance nutritionist with gloucester rugby so james Welcome again. How are you getting on? I'm well, thanks, Jamie. Thanks very much for having me. Good evening, everybody. Nice one. Well, James, um, it's good to have you both on here. Now, um, I wasn't actually planning to start like this, but having seen you both on screen, James and I have done a few things together in the past, and um, we've actually had to address some rumours before that where we've been to clients and <laughs> members have asked kind of if James and I are related. Often they would ask <laughs> if like we're brothers, but to be straight, like there have been times where they've asked if James is my dad and things like that. And Alex, <laughs> I don't feel like we're helping that situation because right now I look like I'm in a family portrait or something. So just to confirm, we are not related. Uh, <laughs> can we just clear that up before we get on? Yeah, okay. it, yeah. It, is, it is often asked, isn't it? But I think okay. the height difference usually just gives it away that it is more. more <laughs> exactly. Than, yeah, you can't tell, but I'm actually six foot eight and really <laughs> wide and gym. Yes, so. All right. So enough of that. Let's get straight into the, today's conversation. And I think it's a really important one that we're having. So I know so many people now um, are struggling and the world that we're living in, it feels like a pretty rough place. Um, the uncertainties that we've been dealing with for almost a year now um, has been a challenge for us all. And so the topic that we're gonna explore a little bit more today is all about resilience. And that's something that we've all had to show. So my first question is a simple one um, to you, Alex, and that's what does resilience really mean to you? Well, that's a, a good, tough question to begin, Jamie. Um, yeah. I think resilience is what every single one of us is having to show um, at the moment. Um, as you said, it, it's difficult. And even if you don't realise, um, for me, it, it's getting up in the morning. It's a difficult day. It's going about your day. It can be as simple as ticking off some bits off your list and making sure you've moved forwards um, and making sure at the end of the day, you feel like you've achieved something. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I think I've seen it in two very different ways in kind of my sporting career, my personal career. Um, in terms of sporting career, you know, injuries for one is is one where you have to be resilient you have to be tough in character and almost defy 
the easy route you know mm-hmm. take take the more difficult path um you know now as everybody else we're we're all at home people are working from home people are homeschooling um it's about doing what we can do and doing it to the best of our ability and for me that that really is um a resilient human which as i said everybody whether you think it or not at the moment are being incredibly resilient yeah for sure i think it's a good time to acknowledge that isn't it the fact that we're still here that we're still going that's a good sign and james uh would you would you agree would you define it in a different way would you add anything to that Oh, no, I think Alex has got it absolutely spot on. Um, I think the key uh, thing that Alex mentioned was around moving forward. It's mm-hmm. it's about being able to get up and move forward with your day, with your roles, with whatever it is, the challenges that are set in front of you. As long as you continue to move forward in some way each day, then you're demonstrating that resilience that we're being, like we said, or everyone's being asked to demonstrate at the moment. And people maybe haven't had to develop um, certain you know, tactics for this at times, but everyone's being enforced to do this at the moment. So it's no, there's no right way to do it. It's just a case of yeah. continuing to move forward as best we can with each day. Yeah. No, I see. I think it's something that we maybe feel pressured to do is be overly positive or always try and force ourselves to do things, but also at the same time of that, you know, just taking action is a positive step. Get, we don't appreciate it. And I know we never will because it doesn't seem like a big thing, but getting up every day, making your bed every day, looking after the small things means that you have allowed more time to look after the bigger things. And James, we were speaking a little bit before off camera about round two of homeschooling and the challenges associated with that. I would ask if you've learned a lot, but um, I think maybe what we're going through day to day and some of the struggles that we've all faced, um, it would be great to know kind of like from a personal level and thinking specifically about right now. And in my view, I think that the mood of the country during this particular lockdown, with it being winter, with it being the third one, seems like we're struggling a lot. And I just wanted to get your experiences. Like, what are you finding most challenging? And is that something that you expected? Yeah, I was. I think everyone who has children of school age was kind of hoping that the schools would stay open, but we all understand that it's for the best for, for what we need to happen to, to lower the rates of cases is to is to have the schools um, shut at the moment. So I think it was kind of with a bit of a deep breath that we sort of took on the homeschooling um, again. But I think it's also about having the, the right expectations. I think during the first lockdown, I think those got adjusted quite quickly as to how much you could expect to get done in a day or how much interest the kids would have at home in in, the, in being asked to do something by their parents all of the time rather than teachers and, and outside personalities as well. So I think it's definitely changed my expectations of what we can try and achieve in a day and really celebrating the small wins each day by getting things mm-hmm. done you know and like you know, as Alex mentioned as well having that kind of little bit of a to-do list of targets for the day to do with the boys I've got two young boys who are four and seven so unfortunately they're not quite at the point where I can just leave them to <laughs> to go and do their their lessons um I think that's that's been a big plus this time is definitely understanding how to celebrate those small wins each day and making sure that we we make targets which are very much achievable and then we can celebrate them each day and, and keep moving forward and my times tables are getting better every day now. yeah he's getting there <laughs> yeah. nice but i couldn't yeah. i couldn't agree any more james i think um actually also another thing that's really important to recognize is resilience is tough you know it, it's a skill and we're being challenged to the maximum at the moment and it's it's okay for it to you know as long as you're moving in the right direction resilience isn't linear you're going to have days where it feels like okay nothing has gone away it's been incredibly difficult but actually tomorrow this is what i want to achieve or this is what i want to and i think kind of being kind to yourself at the moment is really important yeah. recognizing that not every day is going to be brilliant it might be a bit more difficult one day than the next um but always having in mind okay this is where i want to go these are the positive things I can do. You know, for mm. me, it's silly. I write a list every day. And if I'm having a bad day, I'll put, you know, picking up the eggs as a job, <laughs> you know, whatever yeah. it may be, you know, I'll put making my bed as a ticket. It makes you feel better. You know, sure. it's a positive step in the right direction. So it's doing whatever you need to do to make yourself feel good in a difficult time. I think that is also showing an enormous amount of resilience. Nice. Yeah, the smallest step shouldn't be undervalued right now. Um, James, I have to ask, how is like classroom behaviour? Are the kids, uh, any detentions, any disciplinary, we can help with that or are you good? Yeah, the little one at times could do with that. Uh... <laughs> okay, work to be done. But, uh, but no, it's, it's, I think it's, 
it's that combination as well and i think that's where the, the keeping active with the kids as well has been really really crucial is is it's making sure breaking up the day by just getting out of the house getting into the park or getting yeah. on the bike and going out with the with my two is is key for them because you know exactly you can get to the you know first thing in the morning you can get an hour into the morning and realize quite quickly that it's not happening this morning so we need to do sure. something different let's mm. go and run around the garden for half an hour and throw a ball around kick a ball and um, let's go on the bike let's go and do something to be active and then we can come back and try and sit down for 20, 20 minutes and do something productive nice. but it's yeah. having that kind of recognition of, of what you need to do to then be able to move forward in the day and, and that's where that's I think the activity side of it comes in as well for me definitely cool so it's about being flexible as well as taking small steps and then Alex for you obviously um homeschooling not quite yet, but you have got something really on the way too. But how, what have you found most challenging for kind of this period right now? And maybe you want to explain at this point a little bit about your life over the last year or so too. Yeah, so over the last, you know, year, year and a half, life has changed enormously. So um, in January of 2020, um, I, I went back after a really long head injury to um, try and compete back with hockey. Um, it was very apparent after a few weeks that my, you know, my head injury still wasn't where it needed to be. And I retired in February. Um, I'm now imminently, um, expect, I think I'm 39 weeks and six days today. So expecting a baby tomorrow. I'm so scared right now. <laughs> really <laughs> hoping she doesn't come anytime <laughs> too, too soon. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's, it's a new, very exciting chapter in our life. But it has thrown up other challenges um, throughout COVID specifically with obviously has my husband not been able to come to scans and mm. um, midwife appointment tomorrow and so again it's it's what's happening in my world at the moment there's lots of things happening in everybody else's but it's it's a good example of where things are different um, and actually how do we manage that well you know it's taking my husband in on FaceTime to appointments and nice. um, it's you know it's making sure we're we're well prepared um, as we can be um, and very much about looking forward but I'd say the challenges for me now has been probably like everybody else almost that sense of unfulfillment or I'm mm -hmm. not as busy as I normally am or I can't do all the things obviously that's impacted by being very very pregnant um, yeah. but I can't do all the things I normally do um, so it's just how can I tailor my day to make sure at the end I feel like I have achieved some bits as I mm -hmm. said for me it's about having a toolkit of different things to do and um, James has you know touched on it for me being outside is enormous so even if it's a 20 minute walk get some fresh air break up the day um, for some people it might be it might be baking it might be puzzles it might be I bet my husband wishes it was baking it's not in my household <laughs> uh -huh. um, but it, it can be it can be anything but actually I think variety at the moment when life has taken that away because of the situation we're all in the pandemic trying to find variety around your day I think is key so yeah. just identify those things you can do within a, you know within your household and going out for walks whatever it may be has been really important for me um cool. and i think it really helps in terms of your physical health and your mental well-being at the moment as well yeah for sure i can definitely relate to that feeling of kind of life being on hold but mm. it is amazing how many things you can find to do in a different room oh. in your house and stuff like that like i am um, at the start of lockdown tried way too many things and none of them were successful but there's no way i'd have done it before so i guess you two are always really positive which is nice to hear about but we've sort of touched on uh, personal lives but we also shouldn't ignore the fact that you both had such successful sporting careers as well and what I think is quite important for us to mention as well now is that you both were in a sporting and an elite environment where you had such a clear and obvious definition of what success was like it was a very obvious goal I'm sure for you both like every day that you came in and did your training you knew what you were working towards and so I was wondering from your professional careers and that structure and that process driven sort of approach have has that helped you too with your approach now and has it helped you cope um, I suppose Alex firstly um, you know Rio and London were probably two of the main things that you worked towards every day and you achieved that but has that helped you now or has it actually become a bit of an issue as well um I think it definitely I have to say it for me it definitely helped me um mm -hmm. I think um learning how valuable it is to set a goal I think is probably one of the best life lessons I've learned you know if you think now it's very easy to just go day by day 
and just mm-hmm. go through the day. But actually, even throughout COVID, I've set myself little targets in the week to make sure, you know, even if it's doing my 10,000 steps a day to keep active. Um, if it's a yoga session, a resistance session, if I don't set that for myself at the beginning of the week, the days can just all mold into yeah. one. And, and you feel so differently. I think what sport taught me is actually the value of taking sitting back reflecting okay what is it I want to achieve and for us you're right it was very clear we, we wanted to try and medal at Olympic Games now you can never ever fully control the outcome but you can control the process and actually how that makes you feel intrinsically in terms of I feel real pride in trying to achieve this and do this well you know in in London for example we wanted to win the gold medal we didn't we won the bronze so you know you could argue we failed but actually the process we went through to get to that point that bronze medal feels like gold to me it's one of my most special things and then you go through the process to Rio you know we did win and so you'd say our process did work but actually what's the most special thing to me it was the process. Yeah. It was day in, day out, having really specific targets, um, staying connected with my teammates, which, I mean, goodness, if that's not a lesson at the moment, to stay connected with your family, with your friends, you know, albeit online or albeit via a phone, just absolutely crucial to, you know, in inverted commas, our success at the moment. So, yeah, for me, there's been some very very significant crossover throughout covid and also really for me through my head injury um yeah. i'm so thankful i learned all those lessons in sport because i truly believe it's helped me get to this point in my recovery yeah for sure i think um you know what you said about each day can just pass by as if mm-hmm. it's just another one and i think it, i'm calling it like december the 36th or something right now because <laughs> not accepting that <laughs> January is here and it's 2021, but we can still do things and we still can progress. And James, same sort of question to you, really. Did you think your sporting career helped you with your coping strategies kind of now? Uh, absolutely. I think, um, you know, especially being part of a team sport as well, because you're not reliant on yourself. You, I think in, in an individual sport, it's very easy to just look inwards all the time at, at what you're doing every day. And having been part of teams, I think you understand what your role is within the team. And exactly as Alex said, by keeping on focusing on processes that are happening day to day you can uphold those kind of the standards you want to set yourself and the values that you display as a team and as a group that's very much how i found uh, the most successful teams that i played in were were teams who really tried to stick to that because it gets rid of all the kind of noise and the uncontrollables you know at the point at the moment there are a lot of things that we are in no control of whatsoever and if we start to set ourselves you know these these grand um you know targets which which can be influenced by things that we can't control then it's very easy for it to knock us back and i think by by maintaining that momentum by just having really good processes in place sticking to good values about how you operate and the, the standards of how you do things you can always make progress without without having those uncontrollable impacts um during this time so i think that's that's definitely been something and definitely i kind of draw on the times when you know through injury you know i mean having captain teams and going through you know relegation at one point in my career as a captain that was really really difficult but again by sticking to kind of the processes that we agreed on as a team as we, we could still come through those times um in a positive mindset and still be able to perform and i think that's that's something that i've definitely taken into this you know each day like we've talked about lists and about processes but if I know during the day that I'm going to stick to a certain you know certain processes during the day which I know will, will keep me on track then I can make sure that I achieve something each day whether it's at homeschooling with the boys or whether it's I'm in at work um, you know still being lucky to be able to go into work some days of the week that just keeps me going um, and, and I can stick to those those values and processes and, and, and putting those in place I think just gives you that that real consistency that, that no one else can affect. I think. Yeah, yeah, I agree, James. It's yeah. almost like the, it's almost like routine. So yeah. routine is is so important at the moment, even if it's very simple. So, you know, it, one could at the moment, I'm sure, with you know, get up at different times, go to bed at different times. But actually, as simple as getting up at the same time, taking a ten minute walk when you get up, you know, trying to eat well. It's amazing how um, much these quite simple things have become really quite important in terms of being anchors within our days because yeah. our normal anchors have gone. You know. James can't go and do the school run. Um, you know, we can't, we're not driving into the office or so actually what can I put in my day 
that gives me an anchor, keeps me settled. And and so there's an element of routine, I think is has been really important for me. And, I, and I'm sure would um, many people would say the same. Yeah, you know, I've been lucky to do a few of these. And something that you speak about a lot, James, and Alex, you've mentioned is about controllables. And, and I think you have to be disciplined, like you've just mm-hmm. said, with your routine. Like, it is really easy to um, possibly not do too much in a day and those days are still fine too but we've got to realize that this has been going on for a while and actually we now need to start making progress as well and James you you referred to your injury there and um, Alex obviously you've already spoken about your experiences a little bit too and I wouldn't want to say that you've both three been through kind of negatives or you've had to necessarily you know rebuild or anything like that but you have had to adjust the kind of paths that you were on and James um you know, speaking about your goals as a rugby player specifically, would you say now that because perhaps they have adjusted a little bit and they might not be as defined, that you would say your advice to yourself has changed about coping? Like, have you, through the experiences that you've been to, do you think that you would tell yourself something different if you were still an athlete today? Or do you think that actually, you know, having to go through such a life-changing injury has meant that you can cope even better now? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, I think probably having played quite a um, a sport where you project this very uh, tough image of of uh, you know being slightly you know almost having that mentality of going out and you've got to go and try and in a contact collision sport you've got to go out and go to battle every weekend and that's what you're going to do. You have to have this kind of projection and I think that element of being having a little bit of vulnerability is something which doesn't come naturally to to athletes at the best of times. But I think through that period of injury where I got to a point where I couldn't come back and play I got to a point where I had to kind of admit to myself that I wasn't going to be able to do that and you have to be slightly vulnerable in that in that aspect and and have a bit more honesty with yourself about where where you are and I think that is a good thing because when we're in times like we are at the moment being able to actually admit to yourself I'm not actually feeling great here right what am I going to do about it Mm. you can't you can't have this kind of stiff upper lip and and right I'm going to I'm going to just I'm fine it's, it's, everything's fine it's fine and just carry on regardless having a little bit of vulnerability to be able to admit and self-awareness to say you know what I'm struggling a bit here I need to do something to just put myself back in a good place what can I do and that's that's where again having that little bit of um, self-awareness and, and and knowing yourself well enough to to be able to do something to put yourself whether it is making connections with close family and friends that we can't do in person but we can do over the video whether it is doing some exercise whether it is whatever are your kind of safe places to to get yourself feeling better in that way i think it's, it's being a little bit more vulnerable and self-aware to be able to to make that correction before it gets to a point where you need um, more help with it if that makes sense yeah and alex james mentioned there about being honest with yourself Mm-hmm. And uh, that sounds tough. Like when you went through your injuries and having to take the decision to retire, was it hard for you to accept or was it something that you were just, you know, there's nothing that you could do about it? Like, was it an easy decision to make? Um, I think when in, when the time came, um, kind of February of last year, um, my health really dictated that it was the only decision I could make. Um, I still wasn't really well enough to compete. I was trying to tell myself and um, trying to will my body and and my symptoms to go, but the reality was it was it was too challenging. Um, mm. So that decision almost came to itself. I think one of the most valuable things my my head injury and then and and sport conversely taught me was. Particularly when I was very, very poorly, um, I'll be, I'll be really honest. I'm, I'm human. There were so many things I couldn't do, and I used yeah. to say to my husband, and I'd get desperately upset sometimes. You know, two, two months ago, I was leading out the team at a home World Cup. I, I now I, you know, I, I can't get up the stairs without you helping me. I, I can't take a walk outside. I can't tolerate lights. I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't. And actually, it, it took someone close to me to be okay what can you do and and sometimes in life you you have no you have no control over some things but we always have control over others so it was um you know i i can make myself this for lunch i can get outside and and sit and be out in nature and try and calm my brain down i can do some mindfulness um i can do you know it was a puzzle for kind of six to eight year olds to try and retrain the behind areas of my brain that i damaged i can do those things and you know james said a fabulous sentence earlier on about celebrating the small wins 
I became a master at that because I had to be. I had to be. I, I couldn't operate at the level I was operating before. Um, and actually, I think that's such a valuable lesson for us all at this point. It's about, OK, forget what we could do a year ago. Life is different at the moment. We'll get back to that point. OK, yeah. what can I do now? What can I do well? And what can we celebrate? Um, and don't be afraid. You know, I lent on my husband. You know, don't be afraid to use your family members or whether it's friends virtually. I think now more than ever, community is so important. Um, yeah. And that connection piece, um, for me, got me through an incredibly difficult time, um, along with my mindset, my resilience, my family, and celebrating, as James said, those small bits. Um, it helped me enormously. I think you two are so perfectly placed to give this advice, because it, to me, it sounds pretty awful that your your lives were essentially changed pretty much straight away but that's also kind of what we've all had to be, had mm -hmm. to be doing recently and I think a lot of us have maybe always kept in sight the fact that we will be able to get back to doing what we we used to at one point but as more time goes on we're just adjusting and it sounds like that's what you two have done is take the small wins day to day and longer term you will adjust and you will it may be a different trajectory that you take but that's no bad thing and you can still make the most of it so um, I guess my final question to you both and I think, you know, we want to help people today. We want to deliver advice, but let's be straight or we don't want to be unrealistic and we don't want to be overly optimistic. But what do you think it is advice wise that you can give to people that will help them do the best that they absolutely can every day? So one sort of one thing that you both think they can do, if you had to put top of your list, what you've learned and I can see that you both don't really want this yet. So I'm going to go to <laughs> Alex first because it's okay. your first gig. I'm very happy to answer this. I'm actually yeah. going to cheat though, Jamie. I'm going to say Perfect. two. Cool. So go my first it. one is you, we must remember as humans, we are innately resilient. We are. Mm -hmm. You know, history shows us that. We display those characteristics all of the time. Um, and my second bit of advice that... I guess really I've been shown by my friends and family is during this period, um, connect, stay connected, whether it's with family, whether it's with friends, because they build your resilience, they build your support team. I've been in a team my whole life. I, I would have been absolutely useless at an individual sport because I had people rallying around me. And actually I think when life is difficult or life is different, build your team, strengthen it um, and stay connected. Um, which we can all do in different ways at the moment. So they were my my two pieces of advice, Jamie. Nice. I think you nailed the brief there. James, hopefully you've <laughs> had some thinking time. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I'm going to manage that as well as that. <laughs> um, I suppose uh, we've we've mentioned it a couple of times, but but just by spending a few minutes each day to to sort of set out a couple of things that you want to get done. Maybe mm -hmm. maybe just when you when you when you wake up over breakfast or, or just over those first few minutes of the day, maybe just take five or ten minutes just to say, right, what do I want to try and get done today? It mm -hmm. doesn't have to be a massive long list, um, but just trying to put a couple of things down. You can then look back at that and then reflect on the day at the end of the day and think, brilliant, right? I've got those done. Right, what else can I do tomorrow? Or what can I do that again? Or um, and I think the sort of slight variant to that is then for those of us at the moment and, and there's lots of us who are who are balancing work and home school and all these different things it's, it's just understanding how to prioritize things as well because mm -hmm. when you've got lots and lots of tasks being thrown at you you can't do all those in one day and so being able to just have that few minutes of the day to prioritize right what's urgent what's important that's what i've got to get done sure. from a work or a um yeah from a home school or whatever whatever your kind of roles and responsibilities in working life is as well I think it's just spending a few minutes at the start of the day to, to plan and organise what you're going to achieve, yeah. Nice. So I've now got an attempt to summarise what you've both said. So <laughs> you thought your job was hard. But uh, I think you two are so, you speak so well about, you know, what everything's, everyone's going through right now because you have lived through it already in, in some ways. But I think the first thing to say is that we do acknowledge and obviously we do empathise with the fact that things are really tough right now. And like you both said, that that's a good thing to understand. The harder that we look, the more negative things might appear. But I think, Alex, you said it. If we consider where we are today, we have a 100% record of coping and handling with whatever's been unexpectedly thrown at us. And no doubt more will happen. But if I'd have said to you to this time last year that we'd be having this conversation and we'd be in this scenario, 
everyone watching right now and us I'm sure would have said that's never gonna happen that's not possible but you know a lot of us have have coped well and that's a good thing as well don't be don't feel bad to say that I think you know anxiety is something that people have talked about a lot at the moment but actually that is just when you think too far ahead and you both have said you know focus on the process focus on doing the small tasks daily James you mentioned about prioritizing but by dealing with just the day-to-days uh, and your favorite athlete line about controlling the controllables it appears that we do adapt and we are resilient and we will get through this so um, I think what you two have both said today has been really helpful did I summarize it superbly brilliantly thank you, so <laughs> Thank you. Spot on. Thank you. thanks um you can come back so <laughs> alex obviously again welcome thanks thank for you. joining us and it's a really cool day for us in terms of the hockey announcement and hopefully with tokyo coming up and all of the exciting things that we can do we look forward to seeing more of you also best of luck over the next few weeks I look thank forward you very to much seeing that. james <laughs> uh, my dad it's been wicked to hang out again um <laughs> hopefully we can do more of this too yeah Thanks very much. Nice one. Perfect. Cool. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, We hope you enjoyed this and fingers crossed we'll all see you again soon. Take care. Thanks, guys. Bye.